Do not be scared by this screen. No, no, God, we are not going to start writing JavaScript. But you do need to understand at least a little bit about it. So you know we've used JavaScript in class, but Dreamweaver has written it for us. And so generally when you have behaviors attached to either a mouse click or a scroll event or something like that, then that is programming at the system level and uh, CSS and HTML cannot do that, which is why JavaScript is a necessity for the internet. Now, all we're going to do in this class, and even in the advanced class, is pretty much copy and paste from resources we find on the internet. But today, we're actually going to write some really simple JavaScript, um, and you will be surprised how easy it is to make it work, because we're doing something very easy. Thank God. Uh, right now, what you see in front of you is a screen on w3schools.com and uh, you know if you want to come in and start learning more about it maybe even try your hand at it the uh, the coding doesn't scare you then this would be a good place to start and then you can move up from there but right up here it gives a nice clean explanation of what javascript is and then i'm going to scroll down just a bit because we are going to be creating variables. And so this shows you what variables are. Um, so VAR is for variable, and then there are three variables defined here for X, Y, and Z. And uh, then it is storing values that it can call up and use later. And so in this case, five and six um, would be uh, stored uh, data values, and Z would be taking X and adding it to Y as a stored value. So you can start to see you can build on this, and you can do some very very complex stuff. And that's where I start to glaze over. Um, so I will leave it to you to figure it out. Then you can come back and teach me. Right. All right. So let's get into Dreamweaver. So the file we're going to work with has already been set up. It's completely constructed. All the images are inserted. And now we just need to add the JavaScript functionality. So if I go over here, we're in live view right now. And so if I click on this first button, you will see that there are already some behaviors put into these. So basically it's just a swap image or a rollover that's going on. So when that button goes down, what I want to happen is for it to play a sound. So let me scroll into this part of the code and you'll see that I have comments above and below the script right here. So this is JavaScript and this is defining a couple of things. And uh, you'll see I have two sounds already in here. I have created a variable called bomb, and I've created a second variable called party. Uh, both of these have been defined as creating a new audio element, and that becomes the container. And then both of these also have a source saying to find the sound file for this bomb, you take this file path, find the media folder, go inside, find sound two. Uh, for party, uh, same thing, except this time it's inserting and therefore we'll be playing when we trigger it sound one. So this is a bomb, this is a party horn. Now right below this in the gray text, I've given you some instructions for what to do in order to trigger the sound to play. So this up here is the function. This is going to be the trigger within the object itself that will say go find this function and then trigger this sound. So you can do this with on click, on mouse over, or any number of mouse events. I'm going to use on click for this. And you'll notice that this must be inside of an anchor element. So I'm going to copy this right here. Don't forget to the quote. And then I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and find those buttons, which are right here. So here is my anchor element, and I'm going to put this inside of that. So just paste that right after, put in my space. Okay, so I'm going to save this and let's go over here into live view again and see how this works. Now this one still isn't working, so even though we've set up the function, we haven't established the trigger. So I'm going to go right down to this second uh, number image here, and I'm going to paste in that same uh, mouse event. And uh, this time I'm going to change bomb to say party. And let's try this now. Beautiful. 
So you can see how easy that is. Very. So this example page is obviously going to be on our class website. So what you can do if you want to create this type of behavior is just go open up this file, view the source, and then copy the bits and pieces you need, which is just going to be everything from here to here, both comments with this information, with this script in the middle. And then you can just paste that directly into your page code. The instructions will be in there and you can just change the names as appropriate. What? So ever. let's go ahead and create a new variable just, just from scratch. So I'm gonna just hit a couple of returns here within the script and this is gonna be a rather disgusting noise. So let's uh, first create the variable. So VAR, space, um, then I will type in what this sound will be. No! If you are shocked at this point, you may pause the video or silence it. Okay, so I've established the container. Um, it is creating a new audio element, and then I am going to now tell it where to go to get that sound. And this file path, again, is inside the media folder. Go inside, and then you want to find sound4.mp3. And then don't forget the semicolon. And that's it. So we've now established a new container. We've told it where the sound is. So now we just need to trigger the event. So scroll back down to that third button now, and just write in the anchor element, Paste in that on-click event, and uh, this time, instead of bomb, we want to play belch. All right, let's see how this works. <coughs> lovely. Just absolutely lovely. That's what separates people from the animals. Oh my god! All right, so down here, we're going to... Uh, Look a little bit further, and if you watch the previous movie on hotspots, you will notice that uh, I have created a whole bunch of hotspots in here, one for each animal. I'm not going to insert another sound again, you know how to do that, but I did want to point out that you can attach these behaviors to a hotspot. You just have to go within the area element. Um, and then you find where the href is located, which would be at the end of the coordinates, and you can just paste it right in there. So this is not an anchor element, it's an area element, but this code will work exactly the same way. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's it for this demo. Refer to this code inside the web page that I have on the website. Um, if you have trouble making it work, then seek me out, hunt me down like the dog I am, and uh, I will help you figure this out.